FX presents the Indie Podcast with your host, T. Sterling Watson. Good morning, Indubians. I'm T. Sterling Watson. This is the Indie Podcast. Where drive time meets late night talk show as we aim to entertain, enlighten, and provide an auditory escape for your day or whatever it is that you're going on. <sighs> Here we are. It is what I'm calling Adventures in Parenthood. And um, this might be a new spinoff podcast or something that's on the Patreon only. I'm not really sure exactly what this is, a, what this will be. But I figured that I need some sort of outlet for one of the new portions of my life that is now parenthood. And I didn't necessarily always want to talk about it in the podcast proper, as I like to call it. So I figured, hey, why not just, you know, it is my podcast after all, I do what I want. And I'll just have like a special episode just all about, you know, what it's like for me parenting so far in well, really, it's been just a few months of having young Ken live with me. But prior to that, just kind of learning about him, about me as a parent, as a father, and just, yeah. I mean, there are certainly things that have prepared me for it, such as, yes, indeed, having a dog that you take care of. And and there will be some times that I will compare <laughs> Chief to can or vice versa because there are some similarities i will not lie and i don't know how other people feel about that like how 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 dare you compare a child to a dog or, or but i mean there are some things that they do that are pretty similar especially if they're trying to vie for your attention and you are not getting it they will find a way to get in your face and there's something about kids and dogs that as soon as you get on the phone that's when they want to have your full attention. But as soon as you get off the phone, they don't care what you do and they're just going to go off and do their own thing. But as soon as they, as soon as you want it, want your own space, your own time, because you need to go talk to someone else or do something else. They're like, Oh, Nope, that is my time to talk to you or be in your face and beg and plead for just, I don't know, your attention and presence. Because that is the main reason why I do the podcast outside of like home or rather in like some kind of locked room because either one of them wants to, that's when they, they want my attention the most, but we're going to move on that. I'm just trying to explain the purpose of why I'm talking about parenting, uh, now, um, it's more of a reflection. It's definitely not something I'm not giving advice whatsoever because I'm still so new to this and it's just such a fascinating new point in my life. And I have to, I do give, you know, I, I thank you for a, a handful of friends who had told me prior to this point in my life, they're like, yeah, you're going to make a great father. I'm like, well, thank you. I don't know what makes you think that, but thank you so much. But there have been people that have been saying it to me now and I still thank them for that. And I know I was recently discussing imposter syndrome and there are times that I, I feel I almost even have that as a parent. And I think other people probably feel the same way where it, the more that I talk to them, they're like, yeah, none of us know what we're doing. I'm like, oh, great. I feel much better. So I'm, I'm not recording this as, as any means of like parental advice to anyone who is out there looking for answers on how to be a parent because I'm still doing that too. So it's, it, that's, it's not, that's not what this is. This is more just me kind of finding ways to amuse others in the journey of raising a child. And um, I met this young child at three and I think he was just turning four and now we're on year five and um, well, I'm jumping ahead because prior to all this, I've been living vicariously through my other friends who have kids so they would discuss stories with me about things that they've gone through, um, whether that be sickness and health and then just being crazy and running around the house and driving them crazy. And there, you can kind of maybe possibly relate to them or hear them out and like, wow, that's crazy. Or it's for me sometimes what I would deem as child deterrent or child deterrence and things that would make me not want to have children or glad that I don't have children. And 
I had come to find that so far, a lot of the things that I had deemed as child deterrence, I either missed it or it's not as bad as I think it is, except for the sticky fingers, because there's there's like, why, why are your hands sticky? Why are your hands covered in paint? Where did you find paint? Why is there paint on the TV? Um, you find yourself asking a whole bunch of questions that you never thought would ever leave like your lips. Such as why are there Pokemon in the sink? Or um, I'm trying to think of other questions that I've, I've asked out loud that I'm like, I can't believe I'm saying this. But, oh, oh, I will say this much. Like you find yourself asking why you're naked way more than you ever think you would. And um, it's, I don't know. I I'm, I'm, Maybe it's just this kid. Maybe it's other kids. I think there are, there are other kids that do have this too, where they just feel free. They have no shame or not, not necessarily shame, but sense of propriety maybe is that is that what i'm looking for i don't know but they don't care and they're just go they'll just run like buck wild butt naked and it, it's just the happiest time for them and i'm like please stop this and then not only that but they will jump upon you and all of their bits in, in your face and i'm like i don't want any parts of this please you need to put clothes on and like go away now for like notes, if we were to have some, I did write down Invader Zim because that was a cartoon that I'm still very much a fan of. I have not watched it in years, but, um, and I, I do intend to show Ashley this show just so she can watch it like throughout this, like the seasons and whatnot. Um, I did show her one clip because I needed her to understand a reference that I'm about to make here. Now, if you're not familiar with Invader Zim, it's a very like, I want to call it, it's a popular cartoon, but it's also one that's like highly underrated and um, it's on Nickelodeon or was on Nickelodeon. And I think they had like a little bit of a revival on Netflix. Something happened where they had like a, a made for move, uh, movie made for one of the streaming services. And um, I had actually watched this one clip before I even continue about that, because I need to explain what Invader Zim is. It is a cartoon based on an alien who comes from the planet. Uh, Urkin, I believe, or he at he least is Urkin, and he comes to Earth to invade it. Um, he is very incompetent at his job, but he has, you know, big dreams, big aspirations, and he really thinks he's better than what he really is. He is sent off to Earth more so in exile, but he thinks he's on a mission. And um, his uh, leaders basically equip him with a robot, which all the invaders get a robot, but this particular one is uh also incompetent at his job he's not the greatest he's like filled with like loose change and like pocket lint or whatever to instead of the actual robots that are meant to help you in your mission in your cause he does not have this he has a he has just i don't want to call him a stupid robot because he's he's not really stupid he's just not um he's subpar to what all the other invaders get again. He's going in exile. Why were they? Why are they actually giving him the tools he needs to succeed in his mission when they're just trying to get rid of him? So he is sent off to Earth with this robot. His name happens to be, or rather, its name, but we'll go with his name. His name is Gur, G I R Gur. That is important because um, at some at random points, Gur is just you know doing his thing, and it didn't occur to me until. I don't know, several months ago or maybe even a year ago that I realized Gurr must be the equivalent to a four to five year old because the the way that they process things, the way that they think and, and just wanting to do whatever it is that they want to do at that time that makes them happy, whether that be dancing, whether that be waffles, whether that be watching like the moose show, which is like just I, I, I don't know whatever it is, but the quote that I continuously say to Ashley, uh, so she just, and we just haven't, we just can't help but laugh. And I had to show her this video clip first so she gets the reference, is setting up the stage for you. At some given point in there, in the hideout that Zim has set up on Earth, uh, he has to wash his face for whatever reason. So he goes to get some soap. He goes, he goes to grab the soap, and I think he starts scrubbing, and then all of a sudden he realizes that the soap is, is actually making his skin worse. And then he looks at the soap, and he sees and exclaims, Why was there bacon in the soap? I made myself! 
I say all that to say that there are often times that Ashley and I will both loudly ask, not necessarily to anyone in particular, but we kind of already know the answer, and just ask, why is this happening? Why are there Pokemon in the sink? And then we kind of already know the answer, and we can just expect Ken to run in and just say, I made it myself. And But, you know, to some to some aspect of that. And that's something that I've come to learn and almost expect to just find the most strangest thing that I think I've seen. That doesn't make sense to me, but I need to at times kind of put myself back into that five-year-old mindset of why this is happening. And then even as they're explaining to you why they did it, I'm like, okay, I get it. I get why you're doing it, but don't do it anymore. That's kind of what normally what parents kind of are, are, are kind of insinuating when they're asking why something is happening. They don't really want the answer. They just want you to stop doing it. And now part of what I'm trying to learn or teach myself is how to how to pretty much not necessarily ask the question, but get the desired results in order to get that particular behavior to stop i'm not asking anyone really for advice on how to do that unless you do have like advice not advice but just like hey this is actually what works try this instead um if that's the case shouldn't sure you know reach out and contact and whatever but you know it's it's a learning thing and and i know not every child learns the same way so we're 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 working on it and most times it's just we just take a sigh as we either look at each other or just kind of look down at the floor, like partially defeated, like, okay, now what? <laughs> and then we just you kind of move on because child certainly has. And I've also kind of thought about it too, where they live in the moment. There's often times where we will talk about tomorrow or even five minutes later, and they will freak out because depending on what it is we're talking about, they want that to happen now, not five minutes from now. And I've even had like timers set so he can kind of understand of how long five minutes actually is. And it's like, it's not that bad, but it's also distracting them. So that five minutes that comes later, it's not so bad because that normally happens when we're talking about food and like you're about to eat in like five minutes. Like, no, not five minutes. It's it's so far away. Or if they're at the park playing and you say five minutes, they're like, yeah, okay, whatever. Or if they're actually paying attention, like, no, not five minutes, make it 10 minutes or two, five minutes. So... It's it's amusing and interesting, but it's part of, like, parenthood, I suppose. And I, I do, again, give shout-outs to the parents before me. Not just my own parents, but, like, my friends who I talk to on a regular basis and now have a deeper connection with them. I'm like, oh, I totally now seriously get what you mean when you said such and such and such. Um, and, and again, special shout out to friend of the pod and my, my sister in pod, as I call her, um, Steph, I will with her webcomic Parenthood Activate, which I remember her remember that coming out and reading it and supporting it. I'm like, yeah, that's pretty cool. And then going back to it afterwards and actually kind of relating to it on a deeper level. Like, yeah, I really get this now. Like I, I thought it was amusing before, but now it. it I relate to it on a molecular level. So I, I appreciate her putting it out there in a way that, you know, a lot of parents can kind of relate to. So this is my version of that, but just, you know, kind of discussing things. So if I have like random stories, I'll try to record them and then maybe just compile a bunch of them because I don't think I can really stretch out a story to be longer than like 15 minutes unless there's like so many details that I need to include that would warrant for such a recording like that. So it may just be a compile, uh, a compilation of um, various things that have happened. Uh, A lot of times I end up tweeting uh, many of the things that, that do happen in regards to, to Ken things that he's, he's said or have done, has done. And I mean, just, just the mere excitement of him uh, or or rather of me, like, either coming home or, I don't know. I I personally have never felt, like, this kind of unconditional love from such a small person before. So it's still very new to me. I'm, I'm pretty much setting up just another quick story here where I I think it's been announced that I'm coming home. Or, I'm like, or rather, I'm right outside. So this little boy who 
uh, had been in his pajamas like all day, or at least some kind of play clothes, suddenly like appears outside in a cape and two different shoes. So he was just so excited that he just put on any shoes he could find. I'm assuming he already had the cape on. I don't know if he put it on just to go meet me outside, but this this is Ken we're talking about. So anything is possible. But it was it was it was nice. So I don't expect that every day. And most days I'm like, please let him stay inside because maybe I want to go check the mailbox or I'm not quite ready to like actually come inside yet because once Ken is awake, he will just talk. And I'm not just saying just talk to you, but just talk in general, just make noise. He is on and you have to be ready. And I am the people that know me well know that I'm a very like pretty much calm and passive person. So, and I can already tell, I I feel like that he is an extrovert and sometimes extroverts with introverts can kind of feed off of each other perhaps, but He's just always on and just always going. And the the only moments of peace you have is maybe I was I was gonna say maybe when he's eating, but that's not even true. Uh, but I would say when he's asleep. But not always, because he does talk in his sleep too on occasion. Clearly. Like we can hear him in the other room. Like um I forgot what it is he said, because we often say it to each other and in, in, in jest. I'm coming, I think, as if like, <laughs> like we're leaving him behind, like, no, I'm coming. And so, um, and then he said something the other night, which I, I don't think I heard it clearly, like enough to know what it was he said, but I'd know he was speaking clearly. I just couldn't hear him because it was through the wall and it, it was, it was funny to me. However, I'm also learning that I also talk in my sleep, but I don't know. It's, I guess it's funnier because it's from a child and the things he's saying, fortunately is not disturbing. Um, but it's it's still amusing nonetheless and like oh that that kid it's he's seen so much and done so much that this is how his brain is processing the day but whatever it is he's dreaming about rest assured when he wakes up he wants you to know every single detail so i've heard many a dream i think a good chunk of them do involve him either flying or meeting superman or not superman i'm sorry spider-man or even Mickey Mouse, who will occasionally turn into a dog, and then the dog will chew on whatever thing, and will it'll just go on. And at times I'm wondering, I'm sure some of this was a dream, and other parts of it are, is just his imagination, because he will kind of trail off and say that he wishes that he was a dog, or he wishes he had a dream about being a dog, and then... I mean, this is actually is what happened today, the day that I'm recording this, where I'm telling him, like, well, you can do something that we call daydreaming, which you just... Go back and, you know, lay in bed and just imagine these things and then let that play out in your head what that would be like. You don't have to share it with us, but just let that, you know, go into your mind palace. I didn't say mind palace, but like go into your mind palace and think about these things and and let that, you know, paint your world. At really what I was trying to do was just to have him go back to bed because it was like seven o'clock in the morning. I was not quite ready to be awake yet. So eventually I think he did leave. Um and I was able to go back to sleep, fortunately, and go into my own mind palace and think about being a dog. But that's, I think, you know, enough for now about Ken and, and his craziness. But if you do want to hear more, then I definitely will talk more about about his stories. And I might move it over to the Patreon, depending on how much like material he gives me. And Lord knows he will give me much material. As long as I know that I'm going to be bringing it here to this platform rather than like tweeting about it all the time. Um, I'm pretty sure at some point we'll also start doing some kind of video stuff with him and recording, you know, him doing stuff. But I'm not quite sure how that will go because we would prefer to get him in his candid moments rather than having him, I'm putting it in quotes, but act for us or, or perform because then you'll get maybe a different part of Ken than the one that will be the, I don't know, the one that we really are amused by. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll workshop it and see what comes about. But, um, yeah, I, I think I will collect some stories, maybe put another episode out like this before it moves on to the Patreon because I, I feel that as I continue to learn about 
him and myself as when it comes to parenting, I'll still have more insights, not even not insights, but just experiences that I feel best. I could express myself through just talking it out um, as well as just talking to my friends again, just relating to them about how things are, but I can bring it here because I do know I have a number of friends that are either currently childless or, or don't want to have children or just curious about my life as you know, being a father, especially to a bonus child, because that also is a different kind of perspective rather than being there from the very beginning, watching him grow up from like from his mother's belly to now where I, you know, for me, I came in a couple of years later. So maybe I missed some of those child child deterrent moments that I have often noted, like, oop, yep, see that thrown up randomly on your shirt as you're just holding him? Yeah, that's something I don't want. But, um, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely see. And, um, yeah, I'm, this is a different role for me, for sure. It, it, does, it does change you. I mean that both, like, in the good sense, like, yeah, maybe I am a better person now because I'm not just thinking of myself. But it, it changes me in the fact that I'm thinking – about him and bringing him happiness. And I'm, <laughs> I, I chuckle to myself because I'm thinking about possibly picking up some donuts to bring to him so he can eat them or rather not eat them, but just lick the frosting off and then maybe possibly having an, an actual bite of the donut. So yeah, kids, they're, they're a hot mess. Anyway, that's it for, for now. You've been listening to the Indu Podcast. If you do want to know more, then hey, reach out. Also, please do support the Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Um, I think I may have additional stories there. I know I'm going to have some videos and some other exclusive content that will only be there. But everything else you can find at Indube.com or wherever you find this podcast. So please do check it out and support. I've been your benevolent host, T. Sterling Watson. And remember, if the world didn't suck, we'd all fall off. Thanks for listening to the Indu Podcast, which was recorded from the south side of Wakanda in Little New Indubia on the corner of Tachaka and MLK Drive, and is part of the Indube Network. Want more Indube? Follow on Instagram and Twitter at Indube and on Facebook at Pod. You can contact us and send Ask Indube questions by emailing indubepod at gmail.com. Want to support or donate? Find the Tea Public Store or become a patron on Patreon where subscribing gives you perks and extra things from the Indube Network. Please subscribe, rate, comment, and share the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, YouTube, Podbean, and wherever else podcasts are found. And of course, visit Indube.com for all of this and much more. Thank you so much for letting us entertain, enlighten, and provide an auditory escape with knowledge and nonsense. Until next time. Use your words, Chief. Good boy. This has been another 3SFX production.